no, how, I how, however, and, and I, I, can en I enjoy a banter, but this is really allowing me to think about, so what does somebody who's listening to our conversation, what do they think, okay? So you make a snarky comment like, which basically says, I think you're asking too many questions. Mm -hmm. So now you have actually, quote, criticized me in public. And somebody then says, oh, maybe Case does talk too much in public. And, and it's interesting because this is the first time you're asking this question. This is the first time that I've tried to take a look at that relationship that we have from the outside. At this point, I've only been looking at it. It's between you and me. Yeah. And it's just this personal thing. But it is a public thing, and so I'm beginning to think that maybe that isn't doing the organization but and the much board good. Yes. But uh, and without wanting to uh, um, say get into too much of this conversation with, uh, well, you did this and you did that, is particularly led to the leader in the fall, where um, case has writes frequently to the or did at that time write frequently to the leader. And uh, one uh, letter in particular that, um, or this letter in particular, I don't want to necessarily read them all, but um, said that, uh, I'm, it always says at the end, I'm speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. But I feel that the rest of the members of my board agree with me. And I find that irritating because you don't know, nobody knows, Jill doesn't know, Bruce doesn't know if I agree with that or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I found that quite irritating. So that's part of... Um, well, that's a separate issue that we it, can address. Yes, yes. We can ask him, please don't put that in your... Yeah, letter. Yeah, that's, that's and right. so, so I think those sorts of things undermine our relationship, my relationship. Well, you've got lots of evidence for it. I'm not saying yeah. you're wrong. Bruce, you had something to say. Well, I think that this is my own personal opinion. I think that once we get back to having an in-person meeting, yeah. mm -hmm. we'll help. Yeah. I could kick Mari under the table. If start <laughs> right? But I mean, or when we take a break, I could ask Case a question. What did you really mean by that? Rather than being in public mm -hmm. and get you know a better understanding. Mm -hmm. right. And not make an assumption. Yeah. I think most everyone has been Contributing that, um, you don't need to, but did you have anything you wanted to weigh in on here? Um, well, I mean, I mean, as everyone knows, uh, the, uh, the, there's been a, a single conflict that's sort of been uh, the real it's a recording issue that really distracted me for seven years. Um, and it's really unfortunate it took that long to get it resolved. It's, I, I reflect back on if it had been handled differently or just somehow more quickly so we had gotten to where we, we got uh, at the end of last year, where we we drafted, uh, we got that that legal opinion, and we, uh, we we drafted board policy on it. I mean, if that had just happened five years earlier, when we had when the hospital had received the opinion, then um, I mean, it just I just reflect back on how different everything would be now. Um, I mean, it's just that, that that whole process was draining and uh, and and yes, obviously affected trust. I like I felt like uh, somebody or some group of people decided to hide a legal opinion from me for five years and it didn't come out until the board voted to hire an outside attorney. It was finally given to the board. That, I mean, that's that's a pretty significant deception, or it's a pretty incompetent thing. It's either I don't know. So, anyways, it's uh, and so, anyways, I mean, so yeah, that that was a, a big uh, thing that really broke my trust. And uh, I, but also, it, I think 
I realized one of my my bigger problems is is that it's not, it wasn't explained at all why that happened. I was just sort of told, here's the opinion, now just, like, uh, now let's just move on. I was given no explanation, no credible, no credible explanation. Literally, we were told Jill found the opinion on her desk. That was the that was literally said in a meeting, the most ridiculous explanation for a legal opinion getting the board. Jill found it on her desk. So, so anyways, um, I you know I I gave Mike a a poor review last year because of that whole debacle taking seven years. I gave him a, a negative review and I and in executive session, you know, I gave I said I was disappointed and there was an opportunity for you guys to explain what happened and why it happened. Nobody gave me any explanation. So I just said, look, I'm disappointed and I want to move on. And so I thought we could, you know, I mean I was kinda of hoping, okay, maybe that's it, maybe we move on. Uh but then, you know, then the the board, you guys get together in executive session like the following week and suddenly you guys uh, all are attacking me for giving him a low review because this legal opinion was not given to the board for five years. And then, and some of you like, were like, like Bruce suddenly was saying, oh, you didn't need the opinion. You were told all this, like as if you knew what had been going on for seven years. It was just like, I don't, it was, anyways, it was a very traumatic, draining process. And but the bizarre thing is, it's just one issue. Like if, if somehow we could just separate that the recording issue and all the uh, everything that happened around that, like every other aspect of the hospital care and management and everything is is just in a completely different ballpark. It is just so sad that this one. Uh, issue that really was just a simple legal issue that could have been resolved quickly had to stretch out so long and be mishandled so badly. Um, I mean, it's it's just it's really I mean, a part of me is just like sad because it like it's destroyed. Oh, I, mean, I don't know if it's destroyed. It's, it's created a really awkward, weird relationship between me and Mike. You know, it's like Mike and I haven't had a one-on-one conversation in like six years. You know, and it's like we used to meet, uh, you know, once a month or once every two months, and we used to have some very interesting discussions because, you know, we might disagree about a lot of stuff, but we can have like an intelligent, you know, discussion about universal health care or things like that. But for whatever reason, um, anyway, so, so anyways, uh, yes, I believe trust is important. I want to be able to trust people and. If I can, if I can compartmentalize everything that happened with the whole recording thing, and just push it aside and try to say, okay, if some people made some mistakes, it might help if people acknowledged or owned up to any of their mistakes. But even, you know, maybe that's like too, uh, you know, maybe I can set that aside and just we can just move forward and focus on other aspects of healthcare. So anyways, I don't know if that was helpful, but there's some feedback from you. Thank you. I, 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 think, I think it is helpful, and I think I can acknowledge that it is unfortunate that this has been an issue that has been unresolved for you for seven years. And I think there is a strong desire to get you to a place where you do feel as though you can trust and I wonder, is it something where, I mean, you said, perhaps I can. Um, my invitation to you, Matt, in the same way as my invitation to Mari with the 10% less, is that I think it would be helpful if you could set this aside and look at the other things. Because I do think that it is creating difficulties for the board, and, and I'm not sure that you will ever get the satisfaction of what happened in the past, because that's where I don't have, and I'm speaking to your colleagues, not to you specifically, Matt, I don't have a magic wand. I 
can't change what happened in the past. And I can't, I actually can't change anything, right? <laughs> you all get to decide. But I think, I think, Matt, that you need to stop bringing this up in order for the group to move forward in the same way that people need to stop throwing little barbs at each other, focusing on what was written in the past in the newspaper or quoted in the newspaper, um, what kind of campaigns people ran. Um, so I think that there's an opportunity, but it's a choice, right? We can keep talking about what happened in the past. And you can be, each one of you, each one of you can be right. And I'll just give it to you right now. Each one of you is right. You have legitimate concerns. There is strong evidence for your point of view to support exactly what you feel. And I am not arguing that in the least. What I'm inviting you to consider is that if you would like to focus on the community's health and the hospital and how we make sure care is amazing and this beautiful new addition is pulled off effectively and that each one of you feels like you leave a legacy behind when you are no longer on this board, then the opportunity is to step up and shake it off Again, with, with great respect and admiration, I'm not in your shoes, I'm not trying to do what you're doing. I, I truly say that, I mean that honestly. I would not run for election on a public board because I'm not sure I would be very good sitting in the seats that you're sitting in. Um, and I live in a district, I could run for a board, there is one right just down the street. <laughs> so, um, Matt, I'm looking at your colleagues as well, but I just said a lot. Anything else you'd like to add there, or should we talk of, have them chime in? Um, I'm good for the moment. Okay. Others? Jill? Matt? Um, <clears throat> there, there has been uh, a lot of tension between us I respect uh, your opinion. I I believe that we could go about, you know, we could have gone about, about this in a different way. But I want to assure you something, Matt. What I did as chair and what I did as, a, as your colleague on the board was always to protect the interest of the organization. It was never to prevent you from doing what you wanted to do. Uh, and I'm not gonna go into all the details that we've gone over and over for so long. You know them, I know them, the rest of the board knows them. But I will say that if you think that any anything, I rephrase this, whatever you think that I did against you, please, it was not. It was not against Matt Reddy. It was to prevent, it was in my best judgment as, as chair and as a board member to protect the district with the, with the archiving of the documents. And um, anything that I did that made you feel otherwise, I apologize for including the, the letter. So I hereby apologize for not getting that to you earlier. Um, I, I obviously misjudged your reaction to that. And uh, please, can we go on from there, if you'll accept my apology. I'd like to say, Matt, that I also could have done more to support your um, passionate concern for 
having our meetings be accessible to the public. And um, so I apologize for not doing that because in my heart, I share your interest in, um, in making our actions uh, transparent to the public. And uh, just for out of laziness and expediency, um, I didn't stand up and um, and say what you continue to say. So I uh, I apologize for not backing you up more. The opportunity remains um, for all of the board and Mike as your CEO to continue to move in the direction of stepping up and shaking it off. And I turned, um, I turned 50 in 2020 and you get older, right? <laughs> you reflect on things and and I always thought when I was younger that life had an arc to it and that things came up and challenges presented themselves and eventually there was resolution, right? There was resolution and maybe not a bow, but maybe a bow. You got to put a bow on things. You got closure. You got, and, and I grew up in a house where there was a real, we are gonna have closure. We are gonna talk about this until you are so beaten down that you will admit to closure whether you want closure or not. So, so I didn't have good modeling of how life actually is. And I think that what I reflect on in this conversation with, with each of you in your heartfelt comments talking about how you feel as though there is not a completeness to the things that have happened in the past. And if you would only have a completeness, you would be able to go for it. And, and what I would, you know, what I reflect on, and, and again, not to, um, not to try to get in anybody's head or, or say that I understand life <laughs> at all, but if, if you were to consider the idea that you will never, it's not possible to go and get closure on those, some of those things, and I do, I do apologize, and if I, but that's where we can't change what happened in the past. Um, and, and, we, and you may think there are things people could do now that would make them, make you feel more like you could, you know, kind of move forward. And I'm not, this is not just about Matt, right? Because when we did the interviews, every single one of you were talking about things that other people did in the past. And it wasn't just about Matt. Um, you know, it, it what you, and so there is, going to, it's going to be an imperfect process because you are all imperfect and I'm very imperfect and we're all people, right? We're do and, and again, hello, COVID, we've just been through really, really hard times, hard times personally, um, we've lost people we've loved, hard times professionally, really hard times as an organization, the community is suffering and so if we could acknowledge that each one of us comes to this table as a flawed, possibly very flawed human being um, who has been doing the best they can and recommit to that going forward, um, that I think will, will help. The other thing that you all have on your shoulders, which most boards that I work with don't have on their shoulders, is this responsibility that you are a publicly elected individual who regardless of what happens in Washington DC is held up to a higher standard than other members of your community. There are things expected of you in terms of how you show up and how you interact that are beyond what is often expected of somebody that we run into in the, in the grocery store, you know, or people we watch on a street corner interacting. And it's not, it's not fair and it's probably not entirely possible in all cases, but 
I want to invite you to that higher, um, that higher level um, on behalf of the community. And getting back to that slide earlier about the, you know, the what, the how it all kind of flows downhill, or, or you know, what you do as a board, and being that people log in or show up or listen in to what you're doing, they're 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 watching for signals about what this organization is at its core based on how this organization interacts at its most highest leadership table. And so I'm not trying to castigate anybody at all, but you know we so let's let's try to be that that first sentence of the mission to hold trust and improve the health of our community through compassionate care, innovation, and medical excellence. Um, that I think we can do. Yes. So getting back to this specific, I have one thought or question. Mm -hmm. Is it not the responsibility of the board to decide whether or not we record our meetings or not? That's not a CEO decision. And if that's true, then it's the board that we should be struggling with in terms of building trust around this. And it shouldn't be Mike who, quote, gets the blame by any of us for the mistakes that we made in the past regarding the recording. Well, I think the should, not should, is not no, no. constructive. Okay, perhaps not should. I, I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say <laughs> should. <laughs> but is is this not a board issue, and not a, a rather than a CEO issue? What we're talking about right now has nothing to do with recording of meetings, in my opinion. Uh -huh. Yes, that was sort of the the that was the grain of sand that started to form the sure. pearl. We're talking <laughs> about the pearl now. And, and I, don't, I, I don't know about you, but I am so weary of talking about whether you record your meetings or not. I don't, I don't think it matters. <clears throat> and whatever the relationship is between your CEO and one of the other commissioners, they'll have to work that out. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's a board issue either. So I don't want to continue okay. to talk about, I mean, Good. my suggestion. <laughs> I don't think we should talk about that. All right. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. And like, you know, to, to Mari, you know, if you think other people aren't getting enough airtime, they're grown ups. They'll get their own airtime. You know? Exactly. So that, you know, you don't I think you can lay that burden down. Good. If you're carrying it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, to a degree, you're yeah, I am carrying it because I want to hear other people's opinions. Well then you can ask yeah. them. You can yeah. turn to Bruce and you can say, Hey Bruce, well, what pearls of wisdom do you have? We're all Separate. That's why I think Bruce is correct. Yeah. That when we meet in public, you know, in person again, it will be beneficial to the board. Yeah. And I did want to say something about Matt. I've known Matt ever since I he came to Jefferson Healthcare about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. What a kind. Um, uh, I was going to say sweet. Sweet's not the right word. Pleasant uh, colleague. Because I was working uh, nursing, mm -hmm. and he was working in IT. And one particular thing that I always uh, remember uh, in those days that Matt was, um, he, uh, don't tell Vic, um, printed um, something for me, because we didn't have a computer at the time, I think, um, for my son's bedroom as a little graphic. Mm -hmm. And my son was about six or seven years old, it was very exciting. So that's the sort of person Matt was then 25 odd years ago. And I think that person is still there. So um, I'm hoping that the relationship can, our relationships can improve. Um, particularly, say, I think we, when we meet um, together in person, it will be a lot uh, easier. Yeah. yeah. Mike, I don't. Again, you can choose, um, but you have been relatively silent. And and yes, we're talking about the commission, and yes, it is on them, but. Obviously, you're a part of this group and this group dynamic. Is there anything you'd care to weigh in on here or point of view you'd like to share? Well, I, th I think a fundamental problem is uh, the, the purpose of the letter. Um, that it, it, the, the, 
the purpose of the letter was me seeking legal advice and me, and I do that all the time, and I don't by practice forward um, advice from counsel on how to handle a situation to the commissioners. But it, this was, how do I deal with a commissioner choosing to record a meeting prior to the board electing to record the meeting? Um, uh, everything from can they do that to is it an open public rep? How do I deal with that? Um, so the letter posed that, the call posed that question and the letter answered it in, you know, paid by the word fashion. It was a, it was a three letter or three page letter um, that, that's, that said, here's what you need to do. You, if a, if a commissioner records a meeting, um, uh, he is doing that in the capacity of, of, a, of an individual who can, who can record. Um, so you need to figure out a way to, to transfer that document um, to whatever archiving system you have. Um, so so that, that was the purpose of the letter. I mean, in some sense, it, it's, this, the letter seems like a red herring because it, it, it was a, how do I handle this situation? And, and frankly, I resented having to have to, this is a. This is one of. This is one of us creating this, this um, operational challenge and legal and finding putting us in legal and financial peril if we didn't um, manage it correctly. And the financial peril is the fine from violating the Open Public Record Act. Um, so there was some resentment with that. Um, and also this overarching, it's the commissioners get to decide if they want to uh, record meetings or not. And, and it felt just sort of like, well, here's how I will, Matt was, here's how I'll just get this anyway. I'll force the issue. Um, so, but, that, but that, that's the purpose of the letter. Um, and uh, uh, when I reflect upon when, when I shared it, how I shared it, I certainly, I mean, it, it, it turned into how we operationalized it, <clears throat> certainly, and I don't recall if I, if I uh, shared it promptly with Jill and Mari. I think, I think they were on the, one of the calls when we were talking with Brad about what the hell do we do with this. Um, and, and there was an element of, pro of protecting the district, which is, how do you deal with that? Protecting the district from the actions of the district. <clears throat> So, um, uh, you want you want to talk about yes, there probably was the nexus of some lack of trust um, that um, uh, sound like was planted for both of us. Um, uh, but but then the the I, how we recall the letter um, is is vastly different. Um, uh, you know, I don't I don't. It, it, it just was sort of this, here's, here's how you need to do this. And here are the, uh, people can record, commissioners can record, but here's what you need to do um, uh, with, uh, with those recordings. So when I hear the letter, I referenced in a different way than, than uh, I interpreted or used it um, as the basis for uh, this ongoing thing. Um, I, I think it's important to, one, share my impression of the letter and what its purpose was <clears throat> and kind of what it says. Because um, it does, it sounds like that's like, that is, that is this big issue. And that, that's, what, that's what makes me re reluctant to, because I think it's just this false, it's, it's kind of this false premise of, of what occurred then. Well, I think it's a, a, a I think that um, perceptions can differ. And I think that opinions can differ, obviously they do. And what I am hoping for all of you is that this can be laid to rest. <clears throat> and that any discussions going forward about recording meetings have to do with the meeting that you're having or the meeting that you're gonna have in two weeks and 
how or whether or when or what, you know, as opposed to what happened seven years ago and last year. And so I wonder if we might call this issue complete and you, if I may say, are going to have to agree to disagree about what the letter meant and when it should have been shared and how you, I mean, you know, and, and so explaining, you've all explained your points of view to each other, I think, until you've heard them multiple times. And so if there's benefit in explaining any more points of view, now is the time to do it. Um, and if anybody feels like they have more to say, I'd like to invite that now because my goal is at the end of this conversation, we declare this conversation and this issue complete. Again, everybody gets to choose, but if somebody else chooses to not make the conversation complete, do you wanna then go with them and let them pull that conversation there? Or do you wanna say, thank you? Now what's the other business we're talking about? I'd just like to add something, if I may. Um, and I think these are my, these are my feelings about um, the issue was that I couldn't believe that somebody who was on, wanted to be in the position on the board for the health and sa safety and um, wellness of our community members would allow um, them to put the district in jeopardy. That's how I saw it because there was no policy or anything, the board hadn't decided one way or the other. And so, this is right at the very beginning, and so I was just astounded that anybody who had the desire and belief to, to get elected would then go and put the organization in jeopardy from financial issues. I mean, Port Angeles, I think they got fined over $100,000 per elapse or being able to um, find a, something from the Open Public Records Act that they were asked for. So that was, um, I was just astounded. And that's what's blighted, um, I think, my, my, I don't say my view, but, but it's, it's caused a rift certainly between myself and Commissioner Ray. Okay, so thank you for that explanation. Um, Bruce and then Case. Yeah, so I haven't commented about this issue because I was late to the, <laughs> to the issue <laughs> for things that happened in 2014 and 2016. I didn't come on the board until 2018. Mm -hmm. And Matt referenced something that I said in one of the meetings, that it was because by that time, by 2021, when we revised our board book to stiffen up our policy around audio recording, I felt we'd done what we needed to done, and it was resolved in my mind. And be, but I hadn't been part of all the rest of it. So, um, so I'm sorry, Matt, if I offended you with what I said back then, but that, that was my perspective, is that you know, we dealt with it, we were, because when I came on the board, we were recording the meetings, you know, and, and then we, we made it an even better policy in 2021. Case. So. Yeah, I was struck, Larry, with your comment about how you, when you said, how could somebody put the, or that you felt uncomfortable with somebody putting the organization at jeopardy? And I guess my question is, what if I, or Matt, or anyone, feels that what I'm advocating for will prevent the organization from being in jeopardy? And that, that's, so it's, a, it's really a subjective call sometimes as to what is the best for the organization. And, it's, and it seems to me a very slippery slope to begin to think that what I think is best for the organization is better than what you think is when we have a difference of opinion. No, I think you misunderstood what I said. What I said was because there was no policy in place, the board had not decided, and it was prior to uh, any policy being in place, any decision by the five member board. That's what, may that's I, the issue, not. May I, may I offer an observation? <laughs> Sorry. I think we're getting dragged back. Yes, we are. <laughs> and, so, and, and so again, 
you will never have resolution in the sense that they won't understand your point of view. I'm so sorry. I don't well, I'm really it. sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really am. Be, I'll talk to you afterwards if that's all right with you. No, because, I, I, be, be, because, be because I think I tend to go by the rules, try to go by the rules well, as a I, professional. And I if, think if there's a law, does. I don't believe that. If, if you look around in the communities, well, if there's a law and, and a policy. Well, the state will probably. But I think if they're. Um, uh, well, I'll leave so, it. I'll leave it. Yes, Thank yes, because there's emotion happening. Yes. But it is so old, you all. Like, honestly, there is so much. You all are so. In, you know, bright and invested, and there's so much interesting stuff to talk about. Please, let's stop talking about this. I wasn't talking about this particular incident. I'm, I was talking about the concept, which I, I think, which I but think helps to build trust and understanding. So that, this, so I'm, I'm happy to take this conversation. It's on. like yeah, because it's it like directed at what I said, mm -hmm. and what I said you misunderstood. Well, and and so I invite you to. The sideline that conversation, and, yeah. and I'll just like give you a little anecdote. I have a, a a cousin that every year at Christmas, her Christmas card is she's kind of an interesting person, and her Christmas card's a letter, and she puts glitter in it or glitter, but those little like those little stars, you know. And so every year I have to open her card <laughs> over the trash can, right? <laughs> <laughs> and invariably some of it gets somewhere. And I heard something someone said, and forgive me, this is crass, and maybe this isn't totally appropriate, but um, glitter is like herpes of the craft world. It's everywhere. It just keeps popping up. This is your glitter. This topic is like your glitter. It's your kryptonite. You're better than this. Let's stop talking about this. And, and you know, I'm being somewhat glib because you all know me, and so I'm taking... I'm taking liberties here. Um, is there anything anybody else would like to say no. to be complete? <laughs> Mari, you don't have anything else to say? No, about this issue at this table? OK, thank you. Mike, anything else to say? Matt, a lot has been said since you weighed in, so I'm not, I'm not being facetious. Is there anything else you'd like to say to have closure here? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it is nice to have uh, a little bit of uh, more information. Or, uh, but I don't, I mean, it's like, it's not like I couldn't.
So Matt, is is it this? Could be, it could be considered fraud. It's just not. You know, it's just like pointless fraud because fraud, you know, in the criminal Matt, sense would involve some sort of financial benefit or something. But this was just this was just sort of like a deception for I don't know for because people disagreed on something. Matt, are you so an attorney? May, may I ask? Are you an attorney? Am I an attorney? Yes. No. No. Okay. So, sticking to the areas that you um, are expert in, or, or I mean, really, what what I'm invite, what I'm asking is, and and I'm I'm suggesting that you may never get complete satisfaction on this issue, and you and Mike are going to continue to disagree on the characterization and what it was and and what it means and why it was done. Is that something you could possibly um, accept that you'll have that difference of opinion? Or would you like to continue to have the commission spend its time on this conversation? It, not just today, but like in the future? No, I, I think actually, I guess just one thing, I mean, I, I mean, um, I'd like to know that the commission will get legal answers when it needs legal answers. I just need to, like, because, I, okay. uh, that, that is, in general, it doesn't have to be about this topic, but it's like, it, it was so hard to get legal answers. I don't feel like the commission has a way to necessarily reliably get legal answers. And so, um, if, if, if I could turn to your chair and I say, you know, Will the commission get legal answers when it ha needs legal answers, Chair? Yes, and it has. And well, I that that's an opinion. Mm -hmm. The answer is for the future. So, Matt, do you accept Jill's comment that going forward, when the commission needs legal answers, it will get legal answers? Are you willing to extend that level of trust to the chair? Uh, I would like to. It does get colored by her immediate. It has. I mean, it's a, that's the thing. Everyone's like, but yes, it will, and it always has. It's I know, <laughs> but Matt, we can't. We, you're gonna. This is where there's no perfect, right? We're all flawed individuals. Are you willing? Because it's that idea that you have to extend it to get it, and if you can't extend trust to your chair that in the future their legal answers will be forthcoming when they're needed it's going to continue to hamper that i mean you get to choose right but you said you would like to would you be willing to extend trust yeah i mean yeah i mean we got to we have to be able to trust in that and that's why i had to say it out loud that okay and I, mean, I need to be able to trust that the board can get legal answers. And, and, and do you now, going forward? I'm hopeful. Okay, that's, maybe that's enough. Do you want to keep bringing this topic up of recording in the past with the commission? <clears throat> Is that a conversation you'd like to continue to have in the future? No. Can, can we consider this issue complete from your standpoint? I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm not interested in talking to the board about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, are you are you are you interested in talking to others in the community about it publicly? That's a question from your chair. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you mean interest. I mean, it's a, it's a topic I've been like talking about for like eight years because I've been trying to figure out. So it's, I mean, most of my people that know me never want to hear me talk about it again. So no, no one, no one wants to hear me talk about this. I mean, outside the committee, even, so I don't care. worry about that. Nobody cares. I feel like no one cares about this issue except me. <laughs> so, even if I want to talk to people about it, no one is listening. Are you? Are you, Do you? Do you need? Do you feel a need to write about it on your blog? That was the question that Jill was whispering. I, I'm not writing about it at the moment. I never know what I'm going to write about in the future. But I mean, I might reflect on anything that happened in my life. I mean, th there's a lot of lessons I've learned from this episode so it's inevitable that it's gonna come up all right
right. But not necessarily on my commission blog. Okay. So everybody in this room has an opportunity to be complete with this issue, and your completeness doesn't, or I would suggest, um, you might choose to not make your completeness dependent on whether somebody else is complete, because then you hold each other hostage and let yourself be held hostage. And so if the issue comes up again at the commission table, you have an opportunity to say thank you and go back to other business, truly. It's like a rabbit hole that has no bottom. And so if I just think everybody should feel, you know, to the degree you agree with me, that if this comes up and you start talking about it, it will take precious time. Mm -hmm. And so a conversation involves two people or more. So I suggest we consider this one closed. I see nodding heads. Um, I'd like to go back to talking about the, the trust issue more broadly and um, talk specifically about the board book. Um, the board book talks about you know, the, the values that you articulate and it, it indicates that there is a time by which you will, and actually what time is it, speaking of time? Just after 12. 12, okay, so we have lunch coming at 12.30 and, and we will then have a break. Um, but the board book indicates that you'll um, have these, these values to meet our mission and work toward our vision. We are committed to the following core values, compassion, respect, excellence, integrity, teamwork, stewardship. These things have trust, obviously, woven through them. There's a timeline in the board book that you will review the values. I think it says every six, six years. years. Last in 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the board book also says um, that during deliberations on a subject, each commissioner is encouraged to speak, stating his or her position openly, frankly, respectfully, um, and that each commissioner will support the legitimacy and the authority of the final determination or action of the board on any matter, irrespective of the individual commissioner's personal position on the issue. <coughs> And I think I draw your attention to will will support the legitimacy and the authority of the final determination. It doesn't say each commissioner agrees to never speak about it or write in their blog about it or talk to whoever they want to talk to. So this is not in any way um, muzzling anybody, um, but it does say that the commissioner agrees to provide, and maybe, you know, again, if you're following the policies in the board book, it means you agree to follow what it says. So this is a policy, it's in the board book, it says each commissioner will support the legitimacy and authority of the final determination or action of the board on any matter. And so, you know, if, you might decide as an individual to not follow this board policy and that because there's some personal value that's being maybe violated by a decision that the commission makes, right? But let's be clear that that means you're violating the policy you agree to. So that, and, and, and if this policy is too stringent that you five don't feel you would like to agree to it, then we should change it. Um, or if there's more that should be said, because this is really what it says about trust. Um, there isn't more. Um, as a consultant and, and advisor on this topic, I would say that it's very hard to you know, kind of legislate trust in policy. <laughs> so I don't know that I necessarily Can't do that for us. see it. No, <laughs> clearly not. Um, but I think let's stop for a minute and talk about this, what this does say. And the other thing, as we, as we think about this, please give thought to not only from your own personal opinion, 
Are you comfortable abiding by these policies? And second of all, does this capture the spirit and support the, the positive aspects of the dynamic you have going on right now for, for someone else that comes into this role? Like, is there something else or some other way or something different that we should put this together so that if you're no longer in your seat and somebody walks in and they're trying to get oriented and they read the board book, how can we, how can we frame it so that they step into the positive aspects of what you guys have as a dynamic? Any thoughts on that? I wonder if we should look further into what we mean by support in that second one. Well, it says each commissioner will support the legitimacy and the authority of the final determination. It doesn't even say that the commissioner will support the final determination. Mm -hmm. Just that the legit that it was a duly constituted vote and all that. Uh, Bruce. But there's another second there there's a little bit of disagreement yeah. because okay. before that it talks about during deliberation on a subject, this has to do with about a commissioner. It says during deliberation on a subject, the meeting each commissioner is encouraged to speak. Mm -hmm stating his or her position openly, frankly, and respectfully. Once the board has taken an action, each commissioner will support the decision of the board. Okay. Which, you know, so then it depends on how you define support, because if I were to go out and make disparaging remarks about the decision, that's, to me, that's not supporting, correct, the decision of the board. Even though I disagree with their decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But you also have the opportunity to right. disagree during the deliberation. Right. So does this policy feel like the right policy to have in place? What page is that that you're reading from? Well, in the board book, the one I was reading from is on page four, just above the board code of conduct. It's the very last paragraph above the board code of conduct. Well, it seems to me there's a slight discrepancy between those two statements, and it seems to me that we should actually correct that in some way. Tell me what you mean by discrepancy. Well, this seems to, if you just read this, then it, we're just supporting the legitimacy and the authority. Yeah, yeah. And it seems to me that it would be easy enough to also put and the result of the final determination. So somehow incorporate what this other paragraph that Bruce just read, incorporate that into this particular statement. And it's easy enough to just add a few words. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. So that's a, that's a higher, a higher, a more stringent standard that you're recommending be adopted into the board book. Well, but that already is in the it's board in book, there. but it's stated in another place. Yeah, it's under, under a commissioner oh, rather than under a direction. It's board already board. there. Yeah. It's the, it's the last line during deliberations on a subject at yeah. a meeting. Right. And then it goes on to say each commissioner will support the decision of the board. Yeah. Right. So, and so, yeah. so I, I think if we take that word and just add that into what you have on the screen there, mm -hmm. then it, we're supporting the legitimacy, authority, right. and determination. You know, we're, we're and the result or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 And, and I, again, I think the term support, what does that mean? Yeah, that's another question. Yeah. But, at least getting that clear, I think, would be helpful. But just a thought. Um, I hear you bring this up, three people voting, uh, sorry, voicing support for a change to the board policy book. Um, it would be helpful. So the the language that is at the bottom that is in the middle of page four that says during deliberation on a subject each commissioner is encouraged to speak 
stating his or her position openly, frankly, and respectfully. Once the board has taken an action, each commissioner will support the decision of the board. That is the, the standard that I hear others articulating support for, that they would like to be included in the paragraph that's on the middle of page five, where it says each commissioner will support the legitimacy, authority, and determination of the final decision or action, and those are my two. So I, I added in legitimacy, authority, and decision. So and decision are additions there in the middle of page five. Of the final, and instead of saying, or no, authority of the determination of the final decision. Does that make sense? Each commissioner will support the legitimacy, authority, and determination of the final decision. Or should we say decision of the final determination? Decision. Decision of the final determination or action? Mm -hmm. Decision. And decision. So the, the so there's only two words being added to the middle of page five. Each commissioner will support the legitimacy and authority. Legitimacy, take out and authority and decision of the final determination or action. Uh, I think that gets it. Bruce is nodding his head. Yes. Case, thumbs up. Mari, yeah. Jill. Matt, what's your thought on, uh, any thoughts on that, on that change to the policy? Uh, intention um, actually what I think what I'm understanding the intention here is that to make the policy manual consistent um, so that what it says on page four in that paragraph above board code of conduct is consistent with what it says on page five um, the third paragraph each motion because it already says that the commissioner once the board has taken action, each commissioner will support the decision of the board. So it already says that. Um, yeah, and I agree with that. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just am suspicious of, like, you know, of uh, the intentions, but. Being consistent. So we're just, the, uh, what Bruce said is we're just being, that he thinks it's just being consistent. Um, well, we've got, so we'll take that down as one potential change to the policy book. And Linda, you've got that. I got it, great. Got it noted. Um, let's see where we're at here. A few more minutes. So, um, to be honest, I think I'm feeling a little bit like weighty of, of so I think what we should do, it's, it's about 12.20. Is I think we should take a break and then come back at 12.30 when I think lunch will be served. Um, so let's take a 10 minute break. Um, let's then take maybe 15 minutes for lunch or you know, to start eating or do you wanna take a full, do you wanna work, I guess, do you want a working lunch or should we just um, take off at, you know, the next 45, 40 minutes, come back at one? Come for a working lunch. Working lunch. Is the lunch going to be served here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Working lunch. Okay. So we'll we'll reconvene at twelve thirty, and we'll maybe spend ten minutes eating, and we'll start the the business part of the meeting um, where you can continue eating at twelve forty. Does that sound good? Good to me. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Stop recording. Um, Matt. So um, the next time
title topic on the agenda is the role of each commissioner as community ambassador. And Matt, for your information, we're on slide 27. I am handing out the two-page guidelines that's from the Association of Washington Public Hospital Districts um, that I know you all have seen before. And, um, but I just thought it would be good to have in front of us as we're having this conversation. One of the questions that we got, or one of the things that came up in the interviews and in the self-assessment um, was that commissioners were not sure that they understood exactly what they could do or not do um, as elected officials. So part of the conversation I'd like to have in this next section is to do with that. Um, and I had the opportunity to talk to Matt Ellsworth 